Let's begin the week, folks, with uh, the bruising week we had, where we almost ended up exactly where we started on the Dow and the S&P. But there were a lot of bumps along the way. Meanwhile, for tech, the selling was more pronounced. The Nasdaq falling more than 6% in the last two days. So the question, folks, is where do we go from here? And Guy, I turn to you first. What do you think? I miss you, Tyler. And as you know, So Lonely, a great song by the police. And you need to call sort of the bond police because that's what's driving everything right now. And I, you're asking the question, where do we go from here? I think we can continue to go lower. I don't think it's over yet. I don't feel any panic whatsoever. It does not feel like capitulation to me. You know, Steve Grasso, who's there, has said 3,700. I think 3,750. It's a rounding error in terms of where we both think it's going. But I'll say this. In terms of valuation, you know, you put a 17 multiple on the $225-ish of S&P earnings, and that makes a lot of sense to me. Steve Grasso, since he mentioned your name and you've been saying down lower on the S&P, what do you think? Yeah, I, th I think that's right. I think 3,800 is where I'm focused uh, in on. I, I've, been, I've been talking about that level. I, I think uh, if you look at where we're at in the S&P cash and where we came from around that 4,800 level, we still have some more wood to chop. Everyone is focused on 4,000. That means to me that it's wrong, Tyler. So <laughs> the big fat round number, the big fat round numbers is where everyone wants to put their chips. And I, it usually means that we can overshoot those levels. So a lot of this stuff is done through electronic trading. Electronics don't have the feel of a human being, which means that they can overshoot. For me, it's 3,800, but that could be a take a look and see to see if you get some support at that level. So I agree with Guy. I think we can go lower. I think you, you sort of have to hold on to some dry powder and, and, and see where the chips might fall once we get there. BK, you know, on, uh, on Wednesday, we heard from Chair Powell uh, that they weren't even talking about potentially doing a, a three-quarters of a point cut. Uh, and, and it seemed that day that everybody cheered that. That was the best news of the day. It's off the table. It's not being discussed. Then Thursday, we, we see the market reacts very, very differently. And today, in the last hour, Scott Wapner talks to, to Mr. Tepper, and Mr. Tepper said, boy, that was a blunder, taking 75 basis points off the table. They're boxed in now. Uh, they've got a credibility problem, and that's why the market is stumbling the way it is. So, how, so what do you think of what Tepper said, number one? And number two, how do we go from euphoria on Wednesday over the idea that the Fed has taken this number off the table to despair on Thursday and Friday about it? <laughs> yeah. Well, well, geez, Tyler, you got a couple hours because there's a lot in what you just asked there. Um, so let's let's start with whether or not the, the Fed is boxed in. You know what? Powell made a mistake. He shouldn't have said it, but it's not it's pretty easy to walk that back. We already saw it coming today. Some of the Fed governors out there had said, hey, listen, not, you know, I'd be in, I'd be up for a 75 basis point. So, yeah, it was a mistake. I don't think it was disastrous. I think there's other things going on. On Wednesday, we were on the desk. We talked about the fact, why was there a rally? The rally, in my view, only made sense if you thought about it this way. If you were short this market, thinking that you're going to get 75 basis points in June, then when they take that off the table for the time being, the odds of the 75 basis points came down, that triggers short covering. That's all that that was. Then the reality set in. We had the Bank of England said, hey, you know what? We're going to have a recession. You had interest rates here in the U.S. start to move higher. You had oil prices start to move higher. And it all just started to fall down. So I, I don't think, I won't think at all the market was cheering anything on Wednesday. It was simply a mechanical kind of short covering in a market that the liquidity isn't that great. Jeff Mills, let me turn to you because it, it, this sell-off feels sort of, Texturally, with the texture of it, feels different than recent sell offs that we've lived through. Whether it was the spring of 2020, which was steep and sharp and a fast reversal uh, moving back up, or sell offs in the fall of, 28, uh, of 2018 when interest rates were rising, or the sell off in the summer of 2011, when things came back fairly fast. This feels like I'm going to go back to what Guy said and what Steve said that we're not done yet with this sell off and that the return, the return trip is going to look different too. What do you say? 
Yeah, this is more your typical bear market sell-off, right? You get these big up days and then big down days, sort of one step forward, two steps back. I feel like that's more you know, what we've been used to over a longer time period. 2020, very different. 2018, very different. But you know, I said it a couple of weeks ago, I think it's indicative of a market that really just doesn't know where to put multiples on a lot of these growth stocks that are high percentages of all of these indexes. Uh, you know, I did, I did send in a chart. It's not perfect, but I think it gives you a little bit of a guide as to where we are from a valuation perspective, because PEs, that's the most important thing right now. So it's a very simple chart. It's just the PE of the triple Qs against the 10-year treasury, not the real 10-year, just the regular 10-year treasury, and the 10-year is inverted on the chart. So go back to 2020. What did we see? We saw P.E. ratios fall, but at the same time, we saw interest rates rapidly fall. So, of course, P.E. ratios slung back in the opposite direction, and we saw a huge multiple expansion. We're sort of seeing the opposite today, where, yes, we've seen a re-rating in multiples in the triple Qs, but rates have risen substantially more. So I think there's more to catch up on the downside from a valuation standpoint. The last thing I'll say, which I think is really interesting, a lot of these stocks that have outperformed, they've been the cyclicals because growth has been getting punished. So think about a, a UNP or a CSX or a URI or DEER or CAT. Look at the charts of all of these stocks. They are now all testing various support levels because I think what you're going to see is the economy slow, you're going to see interest rates peak, and then I actually think growth stocks, quality growth stocks with real earnings, real cash flow, end up being the trade between now and the end of the year. If you have to be long and you're thinking about how you want to be positioned, I think you want to be moving in that direction, buying that weakness. Quality growth stocks, he says, Guy. I heard uh, a comment on, on Scott's earlier show, the noon uh, halftime report. You've heard of that show, right, Guy? Mm -hmm. Halftime Very report. Very familiar you, with it, you, actually. You, you've Flower, heard of it. Yes. So I heard someone say that this time around, don't look to, you've got to change your playbook. Don't look to the old market heroes to be the leaders of whatever comeback we have whenever we have it. That the leaders may, that the leadership of the next round up when it comes won't be the classic, the, the apples, the alphabets, the Facebooks. You've got to rethink that. Do you, do you, do you agree with that? Well, it's interesting. I mean, if you just look at Amazon, for example, it's not like it's traded particularly well. Forget about the last month. Look at it over the last year and a half. I mean, Google as well has not traded particularly well. So in a lot of ways, the argument's been made for you in terms of the way those stocks have behaved. And yeah, there'll be new leadership. I mean, we're going to talk about energy in a second. I'm pretty convinced that energy has been leadership, obviously not a huge portion of the S&P, but I think it can continue to be leadership. So yeah, you got to change your playbook. Listen, the Green Bay Packers won a lot of Super Bowls with Bart Starr running basically four plays. The league caught up to him, and I think that's what's been happening here in the broader market.